When Moses, who was the visible leader of Israelites, took his time on Mount Sinai, the patience of the Israelites grew totally thin. So they brought gold in together and they put him into fire, which, in other words, to bring their symbol of value and put him into fire, which is something that purifies. And Aaron claims that when they did that, behold, this calf came out as if he wasn't really aware of how it was happening. They broke the first and second commandment even before Moses could come down to show them what it is, which also suggests that these two sins are the ones that we most naturally commit. When we think and consider idols, we may tend to picture something physical like the statue of a cow, or we could look at our inner idols such as what the cow may symbolize. And I also think that the other elements in this story, such as the gold and the fire, is something that is as much noteworthy. When idols tend to be quite visible, it is easier for us to see them and to judge them. But as we focus on these blatantly visible forms as the idolatry, we may count ourselves somewhat safe from this first and second commandment. But such forms or shape of idols are merely given the chance to grow into its visibility, because the idols are first served as ideas in the mind before they are enacted. And as for the Christians at this time, I also bet that we serve many forms of idols that we take and fit God into. It is typically the God that I want or what I think God should be. When our mind and our heart is not submitted to the Lordship and in communion with Christ, it makes it easier for our mind to form such ideas of God through our own knowledge. It exerts power in us to manufacture something up and call it God or an act of worship. And when you serve it or worship it, you can actually justify it by saying that what I'm actually doing is I am worshiping God. As the Israelites looked at the golden calf and said, this is the God that delivered you from the land of Egypt. See, the Israelites didn't just break the second commandment, although they try to sound like it. It was also the first. The shape and form of a cow did give away its symbolism and what it represented, which was mammon, the wealth, riches, and prosperity. It was a symbol of it back then, and it is also now. Jesus himself has said that you cannot serve both God and mammon. And it was such an irony that happened back in 2019 that I had to recall this event, which was when Nadia Boltz Weber, the radical feminist pastor, invited the woman to give up their purity rings. She took them, melted them, and made a shape of a vagina to celebrate feminism. It was supposedly to celebrate the liberation from the bondage of restricting expectation of abstinence because their theology didn't believe it to be sin because Jesus was somebody that apparently liberates. And it almost exactly replicated the event of the golden calf. Impatience and faithlessness, making them throw their symbol of abstinence into fire purifying their value and their desire into its true form, and it turned out to be what their heart had worshipped, radical feminism. And as much as it was far from reality to say that this golden calf was actually God, the Jesus that they believed in to liberate them from this bondage of abstinence was not the Jesus of reality. It was their flesh in disguise of God. And this is merely just one of many idolatries that we can see at this time. But as I've said earlier, theirs just merely have been given the opportunity and the chance to grow into such state. But what about us? What about your gold and your treasure? When they are put in through fire of consumption and purification, what will come out and become evident in the place of God? This thing that we call the wolf in sheep's clothing isn't just out there, but our heart should be the first one that we should observe and consider. Before our theology is our desire and treasure. So what is your treasure? It could be your dreams and hopes in life. Or it could be your accomplished ministry. Or it could be your Christian image. Or your political stance. Or your gift of the spirit. Or even your freedom from pornography could be your idol. It is written that all laws are summarized into the two new commandments that Jesus has given to us. So if our heart isn't for them, let's just forget everything else. Can you pray and ask, make me like Jesus no matter what? And when you do, he will bring you into nothing and he will put you through fire to see what comes forth. The Lord gives and he takes away. And when he does, will you find yourself loving him just the same? Thank you guys for watching this video. 
My name is Jay and I love to share and discuss things that will help us to know God deeper and to grow in Him. Please come by my channel to see what my heart is about and if you've liked this one, do go ahead, like, share and subscribe as it would be helpful for this channel. God bless you guys and I'll see you next time.